He says his name is Pesoptimist. You did? Well, in that case, you'll have to take care of him, sir. Yes, sir. Don't worry, nothing will harm him. He is in good hands, sir. I am a boy, Isaac, and I will take you to Safsarshak. Get in the jeep. Where? Which jeep? This one, idiot. That one. No problem, Governor. Hey, nice car. It's not a car, it's a jeep. Now shut your mouth. Okay, Governor, I'll shut up. Where to? I call and I thought I told you to shut your face. Go back 
to whatever you like to the east. But if I see you here again, I will show you no mercy. I am Abu Isaac, and I will show you no mercy. Jericho Road commended me to your very own beneficence. There is no such thing as good fortune, but my beneficence is large indeed. Come inside and see for yourself. Salvation Army. He used to flirt with my sister in his clinic in Haifa. 
When we fled to Lebanon, we found him waiting. When I began to suspect what was going on between him and my sister, he began treating me as his dearest friend. <laughs> when I revealed to him my desire to sneak into Israel, he offered to take me. He hired me a donkey, and I rode it down to Kufar Yasser. From Abu Stan to Kufar Yasser. It was there I met up with the military governor. He brought me here. He was quite <laughs> good. <laughs> Do not be so hard on him. Some of us are strong, and some of us are not so strong. Show a little mercy. He is just a boy. Yes, that's true. I'm only just 24. I only turned 24 yesterday, and there wasn't a soul with me to celebrate it. Only a donkey. And I've heard donkeys don't have souls. We are from Quaket. They demolished it and evicted us all. Did you meet anybody from El Quaket? No. I am from El Manchea. There's not a single stone left standing there. Do you know anybody from El Manchea? No, I don't. We are from Amka. They plowed all our houses under and spilled oil all over the ground. Did you meet anyone from Amka? I'm sorry, I didn't. We are from Berwa. They forced us out and destroyed it. Did you meet anyone from Berwa? Yes! You did? Sort of. No, not really. I saw a woman hiding with a child among some sesame stalks. That's enough. Stop guessing. She's mother Berwa. We are from Ruas, but the army raised it. Did you meet anyone from Ruas? We are from Al Hadassah. Did you meet anybody from Al Hadassah? We are from the moon. It has been bulldozed. We are from Masha. Did you meet anyone from Masha? We are from Shad. Anyone from Shad? We are from Mi'ya. Anyone from Mi'ya? We are from Warit al Sarif. We are from Zir. We are from Al Kabr. We are from Al Kabr. We are from Kufr Bli. We are from Sasa. We are from Isa. We are from Isa. We are from Kufr Anan. جميع فصول مأساتي وكل مراحل النكبة من الحبة إلى القبة على زيتنا في ساحة الدار في ساحة الدار I shall carve the name of every stolen plot <coughs> and where my village boundaries lay on an olive tree in the courtyard of my home to feed the yed with that. How long must we go on carving? How soon will these years of oblivion pass if we see all our memories? When will the words carve on the olive tree? for allowing me to stay with you tonight. It's my first night in this new state. Think nothing of it. I would do the same for anyone. Amo, I forgive you. What is it exactly that you forgive me for? You had with the green eyes. She was my first love. And you found out I was sitting with her on the train. And then you wrote to her parents. Then they sent her brothers to the station to beat me up. I never saw her again, except in my dreams. I don't remember. It's okay, Amo. I already said I forgive you. I'm just happy to see you again. My own dear father, may he rest in peace, held you in the highest esteem. Second only to I don't suffer check. Thank you again, my son. I'm sure you mean it as a compliment. <laughs> They are here. Saeed Miss Optimist is the only one permitted to stay here with the principal. Everyone else outside now. Go on, move it.
to the villagers? They will never see their villagers again. They will be taken to the northern border and dumped. Why then did they go? They don't have an aid on Safsarchik to protect them. For me. Oh, my life, Siri! Have you come at last? We are always here, waiting for you to come to us. What is it you want, Saeed? I want you to save me. Save you? From what? That is the way you always are! When you can no longer bear your misery, yet you're not willing to pay the price to change it, then you come crawling to me! What is it you lack, Saeed? Courage? Endurance? Is any one of you lacking a life he can offer? Or a death to make him fear for his life? Don't be frightened, Saeed. I'm not. I'm not afraid. Good. If you're not afraid, come, take my hand and walk with me a while. Where are we, Sildi? What is this place? I have brought you down into the catacombs of Akka. This is the lobby of the merchants of Genoa. They used to sleep here, exchange goods, gamble, commit debauchery, give birth, get born, bury and be buried. Why did they dig so many tunnels, Siri? To free themselves from the worry of those above. <laughs> Siri, I just realized we've been talking and I don't even know your name. You may call me the Mahdi, like your ancestors did, or the Imam, or the Saviour. Saviour? <laughs> yes, Saeed? Siri, tomorrow at dawn I will return to my city of Haifa. Please give me your advice. My advice won't help you, Saeed. But I will tell you a story I heard long ago in Persia. It goes like this. An axe head was thrown into the forest. <laughs> and the trees said to one another, Do not be afraid. This axe head has no handle. Then one perfectly ordinary tree said, True. We have nothing to fear. As long as none of you give it a stick for its ass. You'd better go now. That story is not fit to repeat. May I see you again, Siri? Yes, my son, whenever you like. Just come down here. But when? And at what time? Whenever you are completely drained of strength. <laughs>
is optimist. Son of the Aesop is optimist who will always be remembered by the state for his services to we poor, persecuted, and hitherto homeless and reviled Jews in our conquest of this God-given land of Israel. I presume. Yes, sir. I am he, Said, son of Aesop is optimist. <laughs> and you, you are a young Sasan Sheikh, I presume. <laughs> It was tragic what happened to your father. He was an exception to the rule. He was a fine man, an intelligent Arab, and he was a loyal supporter. When I heard he was amongst those killed on the Jericho Road, I almost cried. But you can't blame the Irkan boys, no. They had a job to do and what a job they did, huh? Huh? We got rid of 800,000 troublemaking holes in no time. Boom, boom, there he is, there he is. Why? Why? Why did the East Side Pesoptimist have to be amongst them? Do you know what it was? A tragedy. That's what it was, a tragedy. No doubt about it. War is a dirty business. Let it be known that this boy here is a friend of Israel, and anyone who harms him harms the state. My son, take this 10 pound note as a token of my great love to your father. Go and take it, it is the least I can do. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Are you hungry? How long since you have eaten? Hungry? Mm. Sir, I could eat a horse. <laughs> well, how about a donkey? <laughs> if there is one thing we are not short of in this new country of ours, it is donkeys. Is it not true that when people abandon their homes, the asses remain? <laughs> Go eat, my son. I recommend Kiosk restaurant. What that man can do with a donkey is pure genius. <laughs> I recommend the sausage. Yeah. <laughs> All right? Well, thank you, sir. Good. I am a bit hungry. <laughs> Good. Yako! Yes, sir. You look after him for me, all right? Yes, sir. You find him an abandoned house, and he can work under you in the Palestinian Workers' Union. You make sure you take him to the custodian of abandoned property and find him some furniture. They have some quality stuff there. My son, help yourself. I myself found this beautiful Abbas carpet there, exquisite. An antique, all right? Help yourself. You take care of this good boy, Am Jacob. You hear me? Yes, sir. He will. I am sure this good son of Hagar be useful in delivering our enemies into our hands. Am I right, Uncle Zoptimus? Yes. Hmm? yes. Huh? yes. Are you with us? Yes, sir. Are you with us? Yes, sir. That's my boy. It is people like you, Say, that will make this state great. All right? Yes. Go eat and get to work. The future is impatient to us. Shalom. 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 So I gained a position in the youth of Palestine workers. Not such a job as a way of life. I was trained as an agent of the state. I learned the difference between communists and socialists. How to distinguish between those who were subversive and those who were submissive. Shameful work, but it was a living. When I became certain of my importance, I gathered my courage, and without telling anyone, took the bus to the Valley of Camels, on the coast below Mount Carmel Lighthouse. Hello, Khalte! I weep to see that when everything has changed, some things remain the same, with you still sweeping out the old Catholic church. I am under the protection of a reverend, the bishop. You can't touch me. It's me, Khalte. I am already under the senses. Do you hear? Hey, auntie, come down. It's me, Saeed. Saeed? Saeed who? There are thousands of Saeeds. And most of them are good for nothing. How could you forget me? I'm your nephew from Altira. From Altira? Hey. Saeed, my sister's boy, Saeed. Hey. Why didn't you say so, you silly donkey? You've grown. So much! And, and handsome too! <laughs> Did you bring me any yoga from Altira? Huh? Uh, come, I shall make you Shekhar And we will eat half of it ourselves, and 
and give the rest to our Reverend the Bishop. He protects me, you know. How is your dear mother and my sister? Oh, and what about your father? Is he in good spirits despite of everything? I wish I could say I had good news and yogurt, Jose. But I only have bad news and terrible news. Huh? My father, may God be praised, died a mother. <gasps> and you remember my brother? I... He had an accident that is also I... in God's care. And my mother and her sister are I... in Lebanon. But they cannot stop thinking I... and talking every day about all they have lost. I... They are alive. That is news good enough. And you, you are here, Saeed. You have come to visit your old aunt. I God bless you, boy. What about our house? Is it still standing? It's been occupied. That's as much as I know. My father and brother built that house for us. Do you know who they are? I don't see so well, nephew. They're Europeans! That's all I can tell you. Would they let me in if I visited our house? I wouldn't know! But I want to go there. If you are sure that is what you want, I cannot stop you. God bless you, boy. of Hebrew that I decided there and then that this state of Israel was doomed. So as not to want all my eggs in the one basket, I decided that I needed to protect my line of trip through the state collapse. I told myself that the Eggman was my man. Should I need to beat the dignified retreat? The Eggman was a famous lawyer who was not afraid to speak out against the state. Honest to God, that's his name. Or in Arabic, it's my button Jen, who is a friend of my cousin, the Jordanian minister, and dearer to him than his own brother. Under cover of darkness, I went to his house in Abdes Street. I could hear the sound of dice and chips hitting a back of the board. He was a powerful man, the Emperor. The Israelis knew of his opposition to the state of Adon Safsarshek. But such was his reputation that they couldn't touch him. He recognized neither the state or its newspapers. Foreign journalists from all over the world used to beat apart to his door just to hear him attack the state. 
There were articles about him in the Times of London and New York and in the major newspapers of the Arab world. Such was his impudence that he refused to send his son to a Hebrew university in Jerusalem and instead had him enrolled in Cambridge, no less. Yes, I thought if this state were to collapse, I would need powerful friends to protect my neck. That's the question I was about to ask you. Well, uh, just a little game of backgammon. We are neighbors, you know, and they take plant and I often roll a dice together. Oh, really? Well, I suppose I'm... Anyway, I'm off. I'll see you at the club. Who might you be? No, might be about it. I am most certainly Saeed, the ill-fated presumptimist. And to be even more certain, my cousin recommended you to me. Do I know your cousin? <laughs> certainly you do, sir. He is none other than a Jordanian minister, for so on and so forth, and such and such. And what does I owe the pleasure? Well, sir, it seems that you and me have a lot in common. What is it you want? I want to ask for your protection. <laughs> Because I am a little man who has been forced by circumstances to cooperate with the state. And I'm afraid that should the state collapse, which I know we both agree it most surely must, well, I am afraid that because I have worked for them and that I have had no say in the matter, yet it troubles my conscience when a million of our people have been forced into exile. And should they return, I will need someone to speak up for me and tell them of my true feelings and that my allegiance has always been to my own people and that I have done my best to work from the inside. I see your predicament, but you must know that what you have done is known by God and it's on him that you must place your faith. Now, if you'll excuse me, it is late. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, good night. Thank you. I will do as you say and place my faith in God. It was indeed. If you had eyes to see, you would see that I am a man who empathizes with all of God's children that suffer an impediment. Allow me to take your hand. Stand back, you idiot! Show some respect to your superiors! Behave yourself! He is no blinder than I am! He is a big man! A very big man! Oh, he has come to speak with you in private. You will hide nothing from him! Have I understood? Sure, boss! I have nothing to hide! <laughs> we know where you went yesterday. Oh, is that so, my friend? I wanted a breath of fresh sea air. Is that for me, then? Get up. Yes, sir. I'm getting up. See how Saeed was optimist? who has never threatened anyone in his life, and who is known to Adon Sasashek, who is also quite a big The man. old lady, um, Assad, you drank coffee. Oh, well, uh, I drank coffee. I you were also seen spying on some houses there. Do you have a permit to enter that area? I grew up there. 
Do I need a permit to enter my own neighborhood? Later that same day, you visited a house in Abbas Street, yeah? I won't deny it. You won't deny it because you know it is true? <laughs> By almighty God, I swear, I know nothing about my cousin, the Jordanian minister. Except that he's a Jordanian minister. He's a very distant cousin. I wouldn't even recognize him if I fell over him in broad daylight. He is, in fact, your first cousin. And the minister was so on and so forth, said such and such. Yeah or no? Yes, sir. Let this be a lesson to you. We know all about you. We are watching your every move. Make no mistake, Said. We have the latest apparatus that can monitor your every thought. We even know about your dreams. We know what happens inside the state and outside the state. You have been a what? I have been an ass. A what? I am a jahash. I am an ass. No doubt you are a jahash. And now you have become an enlightened ass. Oh. <laughs> enlightened ass, my ass! Stop you!
Get dressed. I can't be there like this. I must get dressed. She wants to see you. Get dressed. Get dressed. I must get dressed. I can't be there like this. You are walk away from Nazareth. She needs your protection. Nazareth? Across the mountains? Our father moved us there after the fight and finally was blown up for the second time. But the Israelis have occupied Nazareth as well. They use the same fear tactics to frighten people to leave. Do you live alone here, Saeed? Yeah, alone. I live alone. How long have you lived here? Do you know who lived here before you? I don't know. I only know they were a family of Christians and they left. Why has you all come here to me? She came to tell us that our father has been arrested because of an informer. Do you know anything about that, Saeed? No, I know nothing. People are saying you are an informer. Tell me you are not a hooded informer. Are you the hooded informer, Saeed? I don't like that. Not like your father. Everyone knows that he was an informer, so why not you, Saeed, pay off the next? No! Saeed, tell me you are not a hooded informer. Oh, be. I know nothing about who did it for us. I work for the Palestinian Workers Union, but I know nothing about the informers. Someone informed on our father. People are saying it was you. When they cordoned off the Eastern Quarter, they rounded up all the men in a vacant lot behind the Coptic church. They had a man with a hood, with three holes for eyes in the mouth. When our men were paraded before him, if he nodded twice, they were arrested. We don't know if they're dead or alive. Our father was one of those men. It wasn't me. I swear it wasn't me! Why did you do it, Saeed? It wasn't me! I swear I would do nothing to hurt my family, Saeed! <laughs> we need your help. You must need your protection. You have to hide her here. No one will suspect you're hiding an infiltrator because you work for them. Can we trust you, Saeed? Of course she can stay here. I will make sure no one knows she is here. But can I trust that you will protect her honor? I know you loved each other once when you used to ride the train together to Akka. I will never stop loving her. I will never stop dreaming about you. I love you. I love you too, Saeed. I have always loved you. That's what I was afraid of. Can I trust you to protect her honor? Of course. Good. I believe you. You can have her later if you want. Legally. Do you understand? Yes! <laughs> now you look after my sister and do not tell us so. This is my home, and that is my husband. Saeed. And what the hell are you doing with 
still in your apartment. That was asking for trouble. Where else am I supposed to be with my wife but in my apartment? Get up, pull yourself together. For years and years I have waited for her to come back. They had taken her with the others they called infiltrators. People from Nazareth, Yafa, Malul, Shafar Amr, Ibn, and Tamra. They dumped them on the Janine plain that was riddled with landmines of the British, the Arabs, and the Jews. Many of them would return again and again, only to be expelled time after time. Yoad did not return. Then, just at the point I had decided she was dead, one of the infiltrators secretly put a letter in my hand. This is the only confidential paper I have kept all this time. I came to regard it as a marriage certificate. Saeed, Saeed, my love, my husband, farewell. Farewell, I await death at the border, but I know that you will save my father from prison and protect my sister and her children. Promise me this, husband. Your wife, you are. Do you want your wife back, Saeed? The big man is trying to help you, Saeed. Do you want your wife back? Yes, I want her back. Unharmed! Then you will have her back. You hear me? We will find your wife for you. But in exchange, you will help young Jacob here fight the scum army infiltrators and subversives who will undermine the state. Those on discriminating, interfering, self-proclaimed guardians of history, Jewish and Arab, those filthy dog do-gooding socialists and reds. Tell him, Jacob. Yes, sir. You are a lucky man, my little donkey. You are the charmed and chosen one. When so many of your ex-friends live in misery, you are an official of the Palestine Workers' Union. And now, because the big man likes you, he will make all your dreams come true. He will help you get your wife back. If you succeed in your mission, and he keeps those assholes from winning votes, then who knows what could be your future? How would you like to be a member of the Knesset? The Parliament? I don't know. I've never really thought about it. Then think about it. It's all possible, my little donkey. Others have succeeded. Look at Al Shalpawi and Nazmir Shawish. The school principal, Abdul Fatah, Tahim Zuchma, and his wife. What I want is you are back! Wake up, Saeed! And you will wake every morning with your lovely green-eyed wife gently groaning beside you. And outside your window, you will hear the joyous sounds of the children of the world's newest democracy playing and laughing with the star of David still shining in the half light. And you will say, all this is mine. And all I had to do was destroy the hopes of a few infiltrators and subversives. Do you want it, Saeed? Do you want it? Yes. Yes, I want it. All this I will do for you all. I will set her free. I never slept. I plotted against anyone I was ordered to. I organized attacks on them, gave witness against them. I infiltrated demonstrations, tipped over garbage cans in their way, yelled slogans advocating the destruction of the capitalist state so the police would have an excuse to attack them. I whispered in the ears of conservative old men that the communists tore up the Quran and used it to wipe their asses. I would sit on ballot boxes from six in the morning to midnight. And or for what? What? For what? Is you out by my side? Has she been released? Do I know if she's even alive? You both failed me. 
How come the socialists won so many votes? I don't know why I bother with you, Jacob. And you, you worthless piece of camel shit. What's the point in trying to get your wife back? There will be no reward for you. We did our best, sir. It's not enough to do your best! Arbeit. You have one last chance. You will try again. The, the Sixth Day War broke out, and the ominous voice of the messenger in chief began to intone. A victory from God and an imminent conquest. I ceased crying for you and began to cry for myself. outside world, outside the catacombs of Angkor, where I now live, for 20 years unable to breathe no matter how I try, like a man who is drowning, in face, hand, and tongue, a stranger. But I did not die. I wanted to live me, but I could not. I was a prisoner unable to escape. But I did remain unchained. How often I tried to cry out, Please, everyone, I groan at the burden of a great secret I bear on my shoulders. Please help me. But the only sound that came out of my mouth was the meow of a pussy cat. Ill-fated one, our ancestors in a loyal group of secret friends, the Ikhwan El Safa, used to call people like you beasts of burden, yoked together with heavy iron bridles and girdles so they could be led anywhere and be kept from saying what they might want to say. They would stay like this until the voice of God would thunder down from on high. Rise up and resist the degradation and humiliation of captivity. Then, God would punish the abusers by placing them in chains. Wondrous days! What do I have to do to hear that voice? Tell me what to do and I will surely do it. Tell your secret to the world! Why was Jusserah Zantana also destroyed? How was this tiny place? 
is able to withstand the catastrophes of war and destruction. When such gales tore off every other island village on the shore, and when Haifa and the Arim... and more deeply rooted than Jisr al Zarqa? Yet, it survived to fulfill the purpose that Jacob had in mind. No, no, not Jacob, my boss of the Palestinian Workers' Union, but James the Rothschild, who had established the nearby colony of Zachron Yaqub in memory of that other Jacob. Its settlers, who had all come from Europe, began producing fine wines. The hamlet of Jisr al Zarqa was saved by the grape juice in Yaqub's jars because they were needed to work in the vineyards of Zachron Yaqub. The Arabs of Jisr al-Zarqa do the work, and the Jews prosper. Hey, Saeed, I've got a story for you. The elders of Zikon Yaqub couldn't agree whether it was lawful for them to screw their wives on the Sabbath. And they couldn't decide whether rooting was considered work or pleasure. So they went to the rabbi for a decision. The rabbi thought long and hard, and then he decided, no, it wasn't work. It was, in fact, okay to screw on the Sabbath. He said that if screwing was work, that would have to give it to the Arabs of Jisra of Zakra to perform. <laughs> give it to the Arabs of Jisra of Zakra to perform. Stupid buffet, that's your Nazis. I hate a lot of them. We should send them all back to where they came from, Jews or not Jews. They give the state a bad name. Give the state a bad name. <laughs> By the way, Saeed, what were you doing down there at Jisra al Zakra? It was fishing. Fishing for what? Just fishing. What business do you have with village girls? With village girls? Tall, fair, young, with a suspicious name. You mean... Bakya? Man, you would also know that I have fallen deeply in love with this girl, whose village was destroyed. She is underage, my little doggy. You should be ashamed of yourself to love one so young and innocent. She was not too young and innocent to be made homeless by the disaster of her village. That was God's will. What were you doing at Jusara Zafra? I was fishing. Fishing for what? Just fishing. What business do you have with village girls? What village girls? Her name is Bakhegya. You mean Bakhegya? I believe the name means the one who stayed. Am I responsible for her name? You're responsible for the state of Israel. She loves me. She got my name on the rock beside the sea where I fish. If she loves me, it is my duty to love her. Your duty is mounting <laughs> subversives. I'm in flesh and blood. I'm a man, aren't I? We want you to marry this girl. What? But you... She's yours. You're free to marry her. I decided to target you at Jizara Zakra. There you can marry your golden girl, but continue working for us, fingering those amongst the workers who are our enemies. And then at night you are free to screw your new young wife as often as you want. You will be a frozen donkey. Are you grateful? Yes! Grateful!
Andrea Jolly! <laughs> Don't keep your side waiting like this! I love you too, Saeed! Truly, I love you ever since I first saw you fishing on the rocks! <laughs> but I didn't appreciate the way you sent those men to ask my uncle for my hand in marriage! Tell me, husband, who are they? What exactly are they after? They are nothing, Hopi. Don't worry about them! They are only work colleagues. They mean nothing to me. Now come to me. Let me kiss you. I'm your husband. You are my wife. Mr. Will you? No! No! Why? Why? I promise you'll keep my secret forever. I promise. I promise. You promise what? I'll keep your secret forever and ever. And what exactly is my secret? Hoppy. That is what I'm attempting to find out. Listen closely, husband. Oh. I am a young girl, under the legal age of marriage, but I know that the people who make the laws in this country will ignore them if it's in their interest. Yes, ignore them, that is the only way. And now they have made me a wife. Exactly. Hoppy, please come back to bed. <laughs> Patience, Saeed. When you have heard my secret, I will come to you as your bride of my own free will. I will give you what we both long for. And then, after we will set up our home together. Are you ready to listen? Do I have your word? Yes, you have my word. I've lost my father, my mother, and my older sisters. My hopes are all in you, so do not fail me. And I will stand beside you through all the trials that life may bring in this God-forsaken state of Israel. Now, I will tell you my secret and what you must do. I want you to return to the ruins of my village in Tantura. Go to the beach there. Go down into the calm sea. In a cave in the rocks below, beneath the sea, there is an iron chest full of gold. The jewelry of my grandmother, my mother, as well as my own. There are also weapons. My father, he hid them there and told us about it so that if we ever needed it, we could make use of it. Since I am the only one left, it's mine. It belongs to me. I want you to go to Tantura. Go to that secret place and retrieve the treasure. Its contents will protect us from poverty. I don't want our children to go hunched back from looking down. I'm used to living in freedom, husband. Now you promise me that you will do as I ask. Yes, I promise. I will do as you ask. <laughs> Easier said than done, Tantura.
Bakya! Bakya! chests of gold beneath the sea. You must be clever, husband. Oh. No one must suspect, most of all, your friends, those colleagues of yours. We'll find a way, Cantuli, I promise. But we must plan it carefully. If there's one thing I have learned about this state of Israel, it is that nothing is ours by right. If they could take the house that my father and brother built with their own hands, if they could destroy a village and murder your family, then what would be our fate if they learned that we have a treasure chest hidden beneath their territorial waters? I tell you they will take it. And then what use will be all of our books and dreams? That is why we must dream our dreams in secret. It is better not to dream. Have courage, husband. Not to dream is to give up hope. I am carrying our child. He will keep your hopes alive. I will fill him with dreams that no wall, no barbed wire can ever contain. No Palestinian Arab has the right to dream. The Zionist dream has replaced the dream of Palestine Arab by right of God. You Arabs of Palestine, you fought but were defeated. You have forfeited the right to dream. If we permit you to live here in Israel, you must know it is a privilege that may be withdrawn at any moment. We will bring this dead land to life. From deserts will spring verdant fields of green, and the dry mountains will be adorned with pines. And the eye everywhere can see the wonder of wonders brought by the tractors of civilization. The Israeli dream is a false dream. When the Israeli dreams, the only dreams he is dreaming, <coughs> they are a poor, deluded people seeking to erase the pain of their persecution by persecuting others. He dreams of an Israel free of Arabs, but we are still here. And now, my husband, we shall have another whose name shall be Fatheh. Which means Victor!
special day of holiday in honor of this new Pesoptimus son of Israel. Oh. He shall be known as Fathe. Fathe. Mm -hmm. The victor, Fathe. We're just joking. Actually, we will call him Wale, which means Wale. It means loyal. Yes. Voila, the loyal, yes. Much better, I like that. By the way, Saeed, the big man asked me to pass on his congratulations <laughs> and also to advise you not to have any more children. One child is a blessing. To have more is a sign of disloyalty. That's what he said. No, no. Saeed! Behold our son. Our hope for the future. How I wish he had not been born into exile in his own country. How I wish he could have grown up in Tantur and known the love of his grandparents. But while his inheritance lies beneath the sea, life will not be easy for him. So now that you have a son, it is more urgent than ever that you find a way, Said. Is he a set and done, Tantura? They have given me the job of spying on our people. But at the same time, they spy on me. Wherever I go, Whatever I do, their eyes are on me. Take your son fishing. What could appear more innocent than that? A man teaching his son to fish, go to Tantura and sit with him on the rocks, teach him to fish. They will grow accustomed to seeing you there. They will not suspect that you have another motive. You must be cunning. Then, when they least suspect it, you go down and you retrieve the treasure. Promise me you'll do it. Yes, I promise. As soon as he is old enough to hold a line, I will teach him to fish. From Waleas' fourth birthday, I began taking him to the beach at Tantura. I would sit him on a rock on a promontory, and from there he would dangle his line. I would undress and enter the sea, asking him to shout out if anyone would come. I would swim far out to the little uninhabited island that lay across from the ruins of the village. I would dive as deep as I could, down into a dark cave under the rocks, in the place Bakya had described to me. Sometimes Mwale would ask me what I was searching for. I would tell him it was for the golden fish. For years and years, this became our ritual. Whenever the weather permitted, Walla and I would be there on the rocks at Tantura. But I found nothing, perhaps because I never dared to venture far into the cave. Is this the way you thank your country, who has given you a new life by raising your son to become a Mukharib? <laughs> you mean my son? Well, uh, a Fadei! Who else? <laughs> you treacherous shit, Fadei Banana! You mean my son? Well, uh, impossible! He still has trouble getting out of bed! He's 16 years old, and his mother still washes his ass after he takes a shit. Well, uh, a Fadei! You're breaking me up, big man! <laughs> Jacob! Jacob! Tell him you know what I would never do this! Jacob! Tell him! You come to my house, you eat my food! You know my son! Tell him! It is true, sir. His son is as harmless as a mouse. And his wife is an excellent cook! Shut sir. your mouth! You Arab-loving saboteur! You all conspired against me! You did this to destroy me, but I will destroy you all! I will destroy his whole stinking family! We have captured your accomplices, and we know everything about you and that bitch of a wife from Tandura has gone! We 
should have destroyed her along with the rest of her rotten family from that shit village. Tell the big man that Walad would never in a million years do anything to harm the state. Tell him what the lazy good for nothing our boy is. The whole country is at work and our son is still in bed. Liar! You planned this. It's true, Saeed. He's run away. They found the weapons of treasure my father hid in the cave. They used it to buy explosives. Walad? They? Who's they? Walad and his men. They got all of them except Walad when they were trying to make contact with guerrillas in Lebanon. It's impossible. Where is he now? He's in an old house on the beach in Kaptura, surrounded by soldiers, and if you kill him, but he refuses to surrender. No. He's determined to die a martyr. Yabakia! Why did you have to tell him about the treasure? You give him hope! I only ever wanted to give him hope. My son. He's only a boy! If you want to save your son, you will do as I tell you! You will go to the beach at Antuga and you will persuade him to abandon his weapons and come out. And you will be grateful that we have been compassionate to you because you are one of our men. If he comes out, we will spare him. But if he doesn't, we will kill all of you. Let's move. You are not my mother. My mother would never collaborate with the enemy. Careful what you say, Willette. They sent me here with your father. He's sitting over there by the wall. Can't you see him? They want us to persuade you to come out. Lay down your gun and come out to us. Why? Because they want to be merciful to me and your father. Now they talk of mercy. What will happen when bullets start to fly, Yama? They'll show no mercy on anyone. Will you let them come? I am ready. Well, uh, Ebony, you suffocate in there, please. Suffocate? Suffocate? That's why I'm up here, Yama, so I can breathe free. At last, I am breathing the air of freedom. Ever since I can remember, you have been suffocating me, and now I am free, and no one will take that from me. Freedom or death? That is the only choice, mother. You have lived your life in fear, and you try to do the same to me. But where did it get us? When I told you my teacher was my friend, you whispered for me to be careful because you thought he can be a spy. And when I heard of what happened to your village, Tantura, to your family, Mama, and I cursed the subhuman asshole that did it, what did you say to me? You hushed me, told me to hold my tongue and be careful of what I said. Remember and be ashamed, Mama. You and my father have censored everything I've ever thought and said, even in my sleep. You told me I talked in my sleep and be careful what I said in my sleep. How pathetic is that? Oh, what I say in the bar, father who shouted me to change the tune. The boys have ears, you know. Careful what you say. Careful who you talk to. Careful what you say. Always the same thing and always whispering. Whispering. I want to be careless and free to say what I want, what I want. And not to care who hears the truth! Our country is occupied! They occupy even our dreams! To submit to occupation is more suffocating than any king! Careful what you say, Wala! Careful! Don't think I don't know you have soldiers with you, Yamma! Oh, you are the only need to certain death! Then give me death! Patience! You must be patient! Our time will come! Dawn does not fly! How long must we wait for the night to end? How long for the lilies to bud? Until it is time. Well, the time has come, whether it is ready or not, and I am not waiting. If it is still dark, we will use its cover to rain terror down upon them. I've had enough of your task of mission. Do not underestimate the power of time, son. Without it, no plants would grow, and no one would eat. There would be no peace after war without time. Our people would never be given the chance to return. <laughs>
that night, Jacob drove me home to my empty house. I didn't sleep. I spent the night wandering from room to room, wishing and hoping my wife and son would return to me. But knowing in my heart I would never see them again. I thought about going to the beach to join them in the cave, but I didn't have the courage. find them, Saeed. I am sorry to have to tell you this, but the big man thinks that they have drowned. He wants you to know he doesn't hold you responsible. He wants you to keep it a secret. He wants you to return to work. Eventually, I went back to the beach at Tantura, which by then had become a summer resort. I would sit on the rock on the promontory, as Wale had done. I would lower my fishing line into the water, mouthing a prayer to my son, hoping for him to return, hoping for some response. <laughs> What is it that you speak in, uncle? <laughs> Arabic. I am speaking Arabic. Oh, and who are you speaking to? The fish. <gasps> I was speaking to the fish. And do the fish only understand Arabic? Yes. <gasps> the old fish. The ones that were here when the Arabs were here. But what about the young fish? <laughs> yes. The young fish. They understand Arabic. Hebrew and all languages. They know that the seas are wide and flow together. And that they have no borders. There is room enough for all fish. <laughs> We repeat, the defense forces of Israel call upon all Arabs in West Bank and Gaza who support the Israeli government to raise a white flag above their homes. Those homes without a white flag will be destroyed. We repeat, will be destroyed. 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 Yalla, barra, barra. Without swerving our thinking loyalty! Idiot! 
That announcement was only calling on West Bank Arabs to raise a white flag to show that they've surrendered to the Israeli occupation. What the hell are we up to raising a white flag in Haifa, which no one regards as being under occupation? Isn't that just splitting straws? The big man regards your act as an act of subversion against the state. Impossible! How? Even if I did misunderstand, would you almost fall? Surely it's an innocent mistake. And if anything, it only shows my undying submission to our great white rulers. Not according to him! To him, it's unequivocal proof that you regard him as an occupied territory and are therefore advocating its separation from the state. That's ridiculous! That interpretation never so much as crossed my mind. Since when does it matter what crosses your mind? It's what crosses his mind, that's what counts. You raising a white flag above your house in the heart of Haifa is proof of your contempt against the state which you are against, uh, involved in deadly combat. Right. So in all and all, my years of service to the security of the state are worthless, is that it? And the big man considers your loyalty as just a front for your disloyalty. He recalls your parentage and character and sees them as proof that you are only pretending to be an idiot. If you are so innocent, why was it you are you loved, Bakia you married, and voila, you had for a son? All of these names are highly suspect to the state. <laughs> but the moron! Has he ever stopped to ask why I was born only a Palestinian and could only have this as my country? <laughs> Shakespeare. You quote Shakespeare, do you? <laughs> From time to time, I find the bard quite indispensable. We shall see just how indispensable you are from just where you are going now. Oh, and where is that if I permitted to ask? You, Said, are on the way to Shabtar prison. Fantastic. <laughs> In life to this dead earth. Rejoice, my brethren! Rejoice! Rejoice in the mastery of nature and welcome the tractors of civilization! Rejoice and let bygones be bygones! <laughs> I need a piss. So that's why they call you the big man. And that's why they call you the optimist. <laughs> <sighs> we have a new mission for you, Said. It's up to you whether you see it as a punishment or a reward. <gasps> a choice. Whilst in prison, you will behave as thus. Your jailers are your superiors, and you will treat them as such. You will speak when you are spoken to. You will eat, shit, and sleep when you are told. Your fellow prisoners are your inferiors, and you will learn their secrets and the names of their accomplices and the places where they have weapons and other illegal devices hidden. <laughs> Am I being understood? God bless you, sir. If a jailer should address you, your first response will be, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if he should curse you or abuse you in any way, mm -hmm. your reply will be, at your command, sir. At your command, sir. 
And if you should hear your fellow prisoners engage in any conversation that might threaten the security I of will the immediately report it to the warden, sir! Why, how do you know? Have you been to a prison before? God forbid that someone should have beaten you to the privilege, sir. I mean, you notice that according to you, the rules of etiquette and behavior, that your prison treats inmates with great humanitarianism and compassion, just as you treat us on the outside. And we will behave the same way. But the question does arise. Mm -hmm. How do you treat Palestinians who are prisoners, sir? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I see where you are going with that. And it bothers us too, you know. But the Minister General has said that the occupation is the most compassionate on earth. Ever since the Garden Eden was liberated from the occupation by Adam and Eve. <laughs> Oh, may God bless us all. There's no need to call on God, my good friend. It is the prison warden who will bless you now. <laughs> I shall give you special treatment. I understand from my dear friend that your past is as bad as the driven snow. <laughs> without so much as a single black mark. <laughs> Except for the matter of the white flag. But that was just a reason. I am also led to believe that you are something of a scholar <laughs> and are known to quote from Shakespeare. Yes. I myself am not averse to a little Shakespeare, and he is at times quite indispensable. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, ma'am. Quite indispensable. Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil. Ah, the evil that men do lives, lives after them. them. The good is often turned in their bones. So let it be with Caesar. The Roman Brutus had told you Caesar was ambitious. And if it was so, it was a grievous fault. And grievous they had Caesar answered it. Here, at the leave of Brutus and the rest. For Brutus is an honorable man. 
and so are they all, all honorable men. <laughs> Shed her blood, nor scars that white skin of hers and snow, and smooth as monumental alabaster. Yet she must die, else she'll betray more men. Put out the light, and then put out the. Nein, nein, nein! It is not time for that yet! Don't! Forget from here on in when you are with the other prisoners, we treat you as we do them. I do hope you understand that this is necessary. Yes, ma'am. I understand. We cannot let them think that I am not one of them. Precisely. <laughs> precisely. Precisely. Yeah, precisely. Well, it looks like it's time for me to go. When you've got to go, you've got to go, eh? Yeah, precisely. <laughs> Please send my best to Jacob. Tell him I missed him over there. <laughs> We are separated by barbed wires and borders, but our hearts are one, which no barbed wire or wall can ever separate. Uri. Beroh, Bedam, Navdiki, Yafristin. Uri. Uri. Beroh, Bedam, Navdiki, Yafristin. Uri. Beroh, Bedam, Navdiki, Yafristin. Beroh, Bedam, Navdiki, It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. What the 
terre. Yahabebe, il y a ma terre. Yahabebe, il y a ma terre. Quand tu règnes, Josh, j'ai passé half of my life in your service. Let me live out my life in quiet obscurity, like any one of God's children, peaceful and unimportant. Why do you always choose the hard way? There is no release from our service. It is your inheritance. Your father passed it on to you. And what if we do release you? What then? Will your people think you have repented? It's up to them. I will put my faith in their hands. All right. We will release you. You're free to go. But you'll be back. Your inheritance will get the better of you. Once a collaborator, always a collaborator. It is the law. You have no one to turn to but us. We'll see. And if by chance you do try to redeem yourself, by some stupid, unpatriotic act. We will see that you return to imprisonment, torture, and starvation. The end came after one interminable night, when I found myself not in my bed, but sitting on top of a blunt stake. A wind was blowing strong and bitter cold, and my legs seemed to be dangling over the side of a fathomless pit. Then I remembered those Indian magicians who can send a rope high into the clouds. The magician climbs it, then descends unharmed, but I was no Indian magician, just an Arab who had remained by some magic in Israel. I am having a nightmare. I thought if I could only wake up, I would be able to escape. But then the thought struck me. What if the stake was real and was not in fact a nightmare? I covered myself with a blanket, but the chill pierced it. Where is the beautiful princess that will warm me and release me from this dream, I cried. Again and again, I murmured her name, blaming her bitterly for my fate. Then she appeared to me. Jacob! Appeal, Jacob! 
it's me, Saeed Mesoptimus. Help me off this damn steak, old friend. Sorry, my little donkey, impossible. Please, Jacob, do something. Each to his own steak. We all have to sit on our own steak. But I don't see you on one. Oh, that's the thing about steaks. We all have one, but we never see anyone else's. That's the thing about steaks. <laughs> Aperia Shash! It's me! Stay in this office! On his chazu! That is not a steak, you idiot! That's a TV antenna! Really? <coughs> I thought it was a steak! <coughs> Looks like a steak. Yeah. You are mistaken as usual. We gave you every opportunity. But you failed to get the picture. Come down, father. Come. Come with me, and I will show you courage. My king, I love you and admire you, but I can't. I want to be like you, but I can't. I am too. Sorry, king, if you think I am weak. to change it, then you come crawling to me. What would you have me do? Just say the words, if God wills it. 